back to my channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. I do all things embroidery, and in this tutorial, I will be making the gingerbread people. So I think I'm going to start with the gingerbread man first, and then I'm going to do the gingerbread lady. So let's get started. Okay, so we have the gingerbread man cut out and we're gonna do his face first. I'm using two strands of black thread and I'm doing the satin stitch on his eyes. And luckily the satin stitch isn't too bad on small areas. It gets a little bit tricky on bigger areas, but I'm just gonna quickly show you how I do it. I like to start right in the center of the circle and move outwards. And because I'm right-handed, I tend to move towards my left side when I do my satin stitching. There's no wrong way to do the satin stitch, so however you guys feel comfortable doing the satin stitch. I also have a video dedicated to this specific stitch. I will link it above. Check that out for a more detailed video on how I do the satin stitch. Again, you could do it differently and that's totally fine. So once I get to the outer edge I kind of flip my project over and then go back into the middle and then do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you don't like doing it this way that's totally cool you can start on one side and then just do the and go all the way across or however you feel. Every time I use black for eyes with a satin stitch, I always go around the perimeter with an outline stitch and that gives it a really lovely finishing look to it. So I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and um, we're gonna start on the mouth. And I'm going to grab two strands of red for that. All right, so we're starting on the mouth now. I don't know if you can tell my thumb's kind of in the way, sorry. Um, I do have an outline stitch all the way around both eyes. It just gives it a nice finished look. And here we're doing the outline stitch for the mouth. And I started on the left side of the mouth and I'm going in a, um, I guess it's a, an N shape. Right, because I'm right-handed so my stitches tend to lean towards the right side so it's much easier for me to start on the left side and then go towards my right. It may be if you're left-handed go the other way. <laughs> I don't know I'm not left-handed. So all right we're gonna show you the face. Here's what I have so far and now we're gonna do the buttons and the buttons are simple. They are green sequins and clear and for some reason this kit did not come with clear which is weird I've never had that happen before luckily I have a bunch of clear beads um, from previous projects and and stuff but yeah weird thing the kit calls for clear beads and did not have any clear beads in the kit so thank goodness I have extra and if you have that problem and you're like hey you know this is my first kit I need you know to find where to get these beads, you can either contact Pusilla, they'll happily send you free supplies if you need them, or you can go to your local craft store and get beads there. So, whichever you find easier. Now with these sequins and beads, I tend to do two strands, and I, do, I go through them once, so up from the bottom through both the sequin and the bead, and then down through the sequin, and then double knot on the back. And because I'm not doing back-to-back -back beads and sequins, I decided to double knot each individual one. You don't have to do that, I just decided to do that. So, which all another note that I noticed on this kit was that the instructions did not include these, like the color. Like the only reason I have the color on here is because of the picture, which I find pretty interesting. Okay, so I went ahead and put the cute little cheeks on there, just a simple applique stitch, and now we're going to work on his cute little red vest. 
Okay, so I cut them out and I grabbed two strands of white and we're going to do a simple straight stitch. This is pretty similar to the back stitch, although the back stitch tends to be a little smaller in size. The straight stitch is pretty self-explanatory. It's a straight stitch. Come up from the bottom and then go down to the other end and then you're done, pretty much. So we're doing a zigzag pattern on the vest and we're gonna do it on both sides of the vest. I'm just showing you, whoops. That happens a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'm just showing you how I'm putting the straight stitch on here. Kind of alternating sides. And the back side is gonna look different from the front. Um, but let me do both sides of this vest. And we are not stuffing the vest, we're just gonna applique both pieces onto gingerbread. Okay, so I actually went ahead and grabbed the white pieces and did the um, beads and sequins off camera just to save some time. Um, if you need to go back and view how to do beads and sequins, rewind and go back to earlier or click the timestamp. I do have a timestamp in the description box just for you. The frostings are just two pieces appliqued together. There is no stuffing in the frosting parts. Okay, so we're going to work on the cute little candy cane and the red stripes are felt pieces and I'm actually going to applique the, the red onto the white with beads first. And then I'm gonna go back and do the applique stitch around each little red piece. I just find that a lot easier. Um, we're gonna assemble the candy cane first and then once it's all stuffed and assembled, then we'll put it on the gingerbread man. See how I, okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. See how I did not use the applique stitch yet. So I went ahead and just, added the red pieces with the beads and sequins first, and then I'm gonna go back and now I'm doing the applique stitch on the red and the white together. I just find this a lot easier than trying to applique first and then bead and sequin. I know it's a little backwards, but I just find this a lot faster to do. Now we're gonna do um, every single stripe this way, and then I'm going to show you the finished candy cane. And you can see the little hand on the gingerbread. I have a little pin there. Notice, okay, so when you are applicating two stuffed pieces, so notice that the arm is stuffed on the gingerbread and the candy cane is stuffed. Do not go through the stuffing when you're applicating because it will ruin the effect and um, you won't get a tight stitch. So when you're applicating two stuffed pieces together, make sure you're only going through two layers of felt, okay? So right right now I'm showing you the hand. I'm, I'm actually putting on the front part of the hand that's holding the candy cane. And I kind of, I lined up the edges together and I'm just doing a simple applique stitch to put his hand together. So it looks like he's actually holding the candy cane. Pretty darn cute in my opinion. And I have the pin there to kind of hold the pieces together, so I'm going to move this now. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to just add maybe a couple of stitches in the front just to make sure his hand stays put. Okay, I'm just moving that over. All right, I'm going to finish this off camera. Here's what our gingerbread man looks like so far. That's what the hand looks like done. There's the back of it. And he does have a bow that I put on, but I'm actually going to wait and start on the gingerbread lady first. And we're going to put, we're going to do bows later. So here is the gingerbread lady. She does have a little bit of hair on the top. Simple outline stitch. Same exact um, stitching for her face and same thing for her little button on the top. We're gonna work on her apron. Her apron comes in three separate pieces, the two shoulder pieces and the apron front. I decided to just applique the, the front pieces with the beads and sequins and then um, not even bother appliquing it. So it kind of gives it a cool like 3D effect. And it, it, honestly, it's a time saver, really. Um, I'm only gonna applique these little divots down here. I I'll show you what I mean when I'm done. So let me come back and do it. Okay, so I decided to applique the front, or the top of it, right? And I left the sides open, and I just put little, um, just put little stitches in between the scallops of her apron. And I liked how it turned out. I feel like um, 
it looks kind of more apron-y this way. There's the frosting, same rules apply, just cut out the two, two front and back pieces, applique those two together, and then applique it onto the cookie. And I took my needle, and there used to be a stamp here, just lightly rub it, maybe take some scissors and snip off you know, the excess. For the cording, you need four strands of red and light green, and you need about 12 to 14 inches. And when you make the cording, it actually halves, halves it. So you have about six to seven inches to work with. And then you tie it around the cute little gingerbread's head and you'll be done. If you need to learn how to make cording, I have a separate video for that. I will link it in the cards above as well. Put it in the description box below. In my next video, I'll be working on the heart cookie and the candy. So check those out when those come. They should be posted next weekend. I am so excited for those and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.